Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to give you guys a 3 for 1 deal. We'll be going over the V Rising 1.0 patch notes as well as the hotfix number 1 and hotfix number 2 that came shortly after. So let's get right into it. Salutations vampires. It is time. V Rising 1.0 is here. When we did our first major update for Secrets of Gloomrot, we shared a fun statistic about how many project code revisions we'd made in total. Up to the early access release, there had been around 43,000, and then we added another 14,000 during that year of development to bring us to our first major update with a total of 57,000. Today, after one more year, we sit around 80,000 revisions in total. While the measurement of one revision can be highly variable, the scale might give you some idea of the amount of effort that has gone into overhauling our engine, updating our systems, and bringing you the complete V-Rising experience we have dreamed of delivering since we first started working on this game around five years ago. With 23,000 more revisions carved into the obelisk of our Dark Sorceress project, we are proud to deliver to you the details of our latest update, our ascension from early access into a fully fledged promised long foretold 1.0 release. Below you'll find the full patch notes collected and organized to the best of our ability. A few little things might be missed here and there in those 23,000 revisions, but this should give a solid idea of the changes you'll be experiencing. Be aware that there will be spoilers in these patch notes. You may want to avoid any extremely detailed list contained here, but in general, it will be very difficult to avoid spoiling anything. Technical. The game has had a major engine update and is now running on Unity 2022 and DOTS 1.1. One. Compared to Unity 2020 and DOTS 0.17. Read more about DOTS here. HTTP, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it puts a link here. The game has had some major optimization updates on both the client as well as the server and should now be running with improved performance overall. World updates. Experience new discoveries in Farbane Woods. Dive into the heart of Ardoran in the Dunley farmlands and unearth the legend of Dracula's demise, where the iconic vampire king was defeated centuries ago by the Church of Luminance. New biome. Ruins of Mordium. After forgotten centuries, the slumbering peace of this domain of eternal night is punctured by the marching of Dracula's legion. Venture beyond the lands of man and into the shadows, where an ancient evil stirs. Gather your strength for war in the ruins of Mordium, an endgame region that introduces dynamic conflict events. Engage in skirmishes against Dracula's legion of Noctum and conquer rifts to claim exclusive resources and weapons. Okay, so here it just has a bunch of fortress ruins and stuff like that. Uh, I'll go down this list, but I'm not going to say new location every time because <laughs> they're all new locations. West Fortress Ruins, South Fortress Ruins, North Fortress Ruins, Vampire Village Ruins, Dracula's Castle Courtyard, Dracula's Castle, Dracula's Garden, Frozen Lake Ruins, Ancient Sacrificial Site, The Shadow Realm, Throne Room, Vampire Merchant Camps. In the Ruins of Mordium, the player can visit two new Vampire Merchant Camps to purchase wares. Dracula's Legion. Face off against a new enemy and fearsome Draculan monstrosities of the Legion of Noctum, and drink their blood to get the benefits of the new Draculan blood type. Battle with the mighty generals from the highest echelon of Dracula's court, Elena the Hollow, Cassius the Betrayer, and Valencia the Depraved. Cargo Travelers. The arrogant humans of Ardoran now traverse the world, carrying precious cargo from location to location. Satisfy your thirst for blood and valuable loot at the same time by intercepting their caravans and further your rise to power. So I'm just going to uh, mention a little side note here. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the cargo travelers were really cool and fun to see in the game. But every time I log in now, I almost never see them. And if I do see them, it's already like just abandoned and taken down it's it's the weirdest thing like i it, i haven't seen one in days and i log in every day so you guys let me know if you're experiencing something similar because i find that very weird <laughs> updated lightning and general visual improvements more love has been put into the world the wilds have been sprinkled with touches of additional flavor and life to enrich the setting it's also been made more beautiful than ever our updated light engine letting us 
better handcraft the moods of locations all across Far Doran. Small points of interest. With the goal of making the world feel more alive, players can now find small, in the moment scenarios scattered around the entire land. These can feature bandits who have set up a camp, monsters looking for trouble, beasts hunting for prey, and more. Uh, as far as these small points of interest, I have noticed a couple of them. Uh, I think in Farbane Woods, you'll see sometimes like you'll see like a little tent in the middle of the woods, I've noticed, and it'll sometimes have like uh, poachers and, and bandits out there. And I, I find it kind of interesting just because like I didn't notice them at first, but then I started seeing them and I kind of wondered if they were like permanent additions or if it was something that was kind of random. So I'll have to study that more to get a better grasp of that um, to see exactly what they're talking about here. Barbane Woods. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have been implemented across the entire biome. Bandit camp updates on the west and east sides of Farbane. Iterated on the size and contents of the camps to make the distribution more even between the east and west sides of the biome. Bandit Logging Camp. Added some additional sunroofs to make the fight against Rufus a bit more convenient. Bandit Copper Mine. Now features a new exit route to give players more freedom to choose their path back out of the mine. Uh, by the way, that exit route is actually, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it is in the back of the boss arena. So when you go to fight Errol, I think in the back of that area is like kind of like a slope and then you can just run out of the cave and jump out. Um, uh, sorry, not the cave, the mines, I meant to say. Sorry. Vampire Cemetery. Player Start Zone. The clouds have been rearranged to better teach the player about the concept of sun exposure. The area has also been improved to allow players to find the exit more easily. I don't know if they mention this here later, but they did add a map, which is interesting. Updated Roads, Farbane Woods. Some of the roads featured in the biome can now have cargo travelers traversing them. New Location, Bandit Camp. Added small bandit camp on the west side of Farbane to better balance out the amount of camps available on that side of the zone. New location, Farbane Waygate. Two additional waygates have been added to Farbane Woods. One is located to the northwest, just south of Silverlight, while the other has been placed just south of the bandit stronghold, right in the middle of the zone. New location, bandit copper quarries. Farbane now features two new locations at which the player can more easily find copper. Okay, so I haven't, I've only seen one of them. I didn't know there were two, so I'm going to have to go find that myself. Uh, the one that I've noticed was on the southwest side of Farbane. Uh, there's now a copper quarry there. Um, I don't know if the other one is on the southeast side. I don't really spend a lot of time in that part of the map, so that's something I'd have to uh, confirm in my own time. New location, Fishing Lake. A new V-Blood boss area has been added to Farbane. Here you can encounter Finn the Fisherman. Silverlight Hills. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have been implemented across the entire biome. Updated roads. Silverlight Hills. Some of the roads featured in the zone can now have cargo travelers traversing them. Sacred Silver Mine. Now features a giant cave opening that casts a shadow on Sir Magnus the Overseer, allowing for more convenient V-Blood boss fight. I didn't notice that. I'm gonna be honest. Uh <laughs> I, I fought him and I didn't even notice that. That's, that's kind of interesting. Dunley Farmlands. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have opened across the entire biome. The eastern side of the zone now connects to Mordium, bridging the two zones. Updated roads. Dunley Farmlands. Some of the roads in the biome can now have cargo travelers traversing them. New location, Dracula's Demise. At the border of Dunley and Gloomrot, the player can now visit the location where Dracula was defeated 800 years ago. A militia encampment has been added south of this location. New location, militia encampment, a border crossing point to Mordium featuring militia units. Militia camp in the south on the border of Holland Mountains have been expanded and now connects to the border crossings to Mordium. Hollowed Mountains. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have happened across the entire biome. Northern part of the map biome now connects to the ruins of Mordium, bridging the two zones. Cursed Forest. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have happened across the entire biome. The southeastern side of the biome now connects to Mordium, bridging the two zones. Gloomrot. Various updates, fixes, and visual upgrades have happened across the entire biome. New location, Dracula's Demise. At the border of Dunley and Glimrod, the player can now visit a location at which Dracula was defeated 800 years ago. A transcendental camp has been added just north of this location.
Unit density. The unit density in pools of rebirth and Rustlock village has been reduced. That's interesting. Global patrols. Gatlers and other heavy machinery on rare occasion can on rare occasions be seen on the roads of Gloomrot South. I've noticed that. Uh, I have run into a couple of those. Difficulty settings. Players may now select between three main difficulties when starting a server that modifies the power of enemies, as well as how deadly environmental effects are. These difficulties are relaxed, normal, and brutal. Uh, by the way, guys, as far as difficulty settings and things like that goes, I am currently working on an advanced settings guide, so uh, keep an eye out for that. I hope to have that out by some maybe sometime next week. So I just want to let you guys know. Relaxed. For those that favor exploration, building, and more relaxed combat, units deal 25% less damage. V-Bloods deal 40% less damage. V-Bloods have 20% reduced maximum health. Blood drain reduced by 25%. And the sun is less deadly. Normal. An experience focused on exploration, building, and challenging combat. These are standard settings. Brutal. Face devastating challenges in the world with evolved adversaries. Recommended for seasoned veterans. Feebloods have additional abilities and modified combat behaviors. Feebloods have plus three levels. Feebloods deal 70% more damage. Feebloods have 25% increased maximum health. Units deal 40% more damage. Loot drops are increased by 25%. Durability loss is reduced by 50%. Gamepad support. Introducing the gamepad support for PC, offering a new hands-on, action-packed V-Rising experience. This includes a reimagined HUD user interface crafted specifically for gamepad enthusiasts, ensuring a seamless and immersive gameplay journey. Added haptic feedback to all vampire spells and attacks. <laughs> Added a crunchy texture when biting, giving you some resistance in the trigger when biting down on your victim. Added some immersive sounds to be played through the controller, such as the gulp when feeding. Huh? That's interesting. I haven't noticed that. I might have to re-enable vibrations. No, due to a bug, some streaming software can pick up the haptic feedback as sound. We have decided to disable haptics while streamer mode is enabled to mitigate these issues. Ah, that's why. I always have streamer mode enabled, so that's why I never noticed that. That's kind of interesting. I'll have to uh, look into that. If you guys want to see maybe like a comparison video of um, just mouse and keyboard versus gamepad, let me know. I play on a PS5 controller. I have gone back and forth between the two. And if you want to see like a comparison or feedback video, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll consider doing that. Castle updates. Relocate castle. Trapped in your first home in Farbane? Now using nothing more than a little vampiric magic, you can move from any plot in the world to any other available one by laying down the framework and pressing a button. Advanced refinement stations. A number of advanced refinement stations have been added that are improved versions of existing stations with bigger inventories and faster refinement rates. Some refinement recipes can only be processed using an advanced refinement station stations added advanced tannery advanced grinder advanced blood press advanced furnace advanced loom new structures and decorations your lair reflects your inner vampire to that end we're providing you with even more decorations to show off your impeccable and superior taste more items can now be colorized as well, including most light sources. Many metallic decorations now have different metal variants. The following new decorative and structural items have been added. Structures, stairs, two new variations, castle doors, three new variations. Grass floor tiles are now dyeable. Mossy cobblestone is now dyeable. Rough flooring is now dyeable and new additional floor variations. Wall hanging, banners, new variation, mirrors, shelves, hunting trophy, plaque ornament, pillar hanging doorbell. That's probably one of my favorite things they added to the game is the doorbell. <laughs> um, paintings, new ones and modifications to previous ones. All paintings now have alternate frame colors. That's kind of nice. Hanging lanterns, pillar torches. Garden, garden fences, two new variations. By the way, the new garden fences are really nice too. I like those. Horse sculpture, hedge collection. I love that also. Garden hedges are now dyeable. Garden cobblestone path, new variation. Miscellaneous, long case clocks, two new variations. Mushroom terrarium, chest table, carpets, three new variations. Cordial rugs have now been made dyeable. Vases, new variation, new additional flowers to put in them. All vases are now dyeable. By the way, guys, I tested out the, um, the floating flower spuck and it's still 
works. I also tested out my method of putting uh, fencing around the uh, the edges of balconies where you take the invisible flooring on like a higher floor, you place a bunch of invisible flooring, then you place the garden fencing and then you put in a regular flooring to make that double railing. And that also still works. So I just want to let you guys know that. Music box. Craft your music box and unlock the haunting melodies of Vardoran. Immerse yourself as familiar music echoes through the corridors of your castle. Change your castle music to one of the many themes that can be found in the world. Specialized containers. Bookcases and stashes have been reworked into holding specific types of items, gems, herbs, material, weapons, armor, etc. Rather than featuring general inventories, new additional stashes have also been added based on this change. Players can directly transfer items to select categories into these stashes using the quick send command. Pillar and wall placements. Some structures placed on pillars and walls can now be placed on top of one another. Torches, for example, may be placed on the lower end of the pillar, while ornaments such as a gargoyle can be placed on the higher end of the pillar. So basically, um, they just made it more modular, which is awesome. Coffins. You now regain health when sleeping in your coffin as long as you are not flagged for PvP combat. Chairs and sofas. Chairs and sofas can now be interacted with, allowing players to sit down on chairs and lay down on sofas. This is probably one of the best changes uh, I've seen. I know this is like kind of silly because it's not really a gameplay focused change, but I can only imagine what the RPers are going to be doing with this. General. Gem cutting station is now a refinement station. Change from crafting station. Added new recipes for the obsidian material that is now used to craft siege golems. 20 times gem dust, 4 radium alloy, 4 scorch stone, 1 obsidian, 120 greater stygian shards, 4 scorch stones, and 1 obsidian, 8 obsidian plus 1 primal blood essence turns into 1 siege golem. New recipe, refine 12 stygian shards to 1 greater stygian shard. Uh, by the way, guys, with the uh, with the flooring bonus, I believe it's actually nine. Um, so that's cool. New castle structures. Stations added. Eye of Mordium. Stygian summoning circle. The throne of darkness. Altar of Stygian awakening. Altar of recollection. Uh, target dummies. Castle relocation heart, including relocation stash. Uh, I do want to mention something really quick here. Uh, so the Altar of Recollection. This used to be the Blood Altar, for those of you who might have played the game before. Um, basically, they repurposed the Blood Altar, and now it's the Altar of Recollection. And all it does is it allows you to basically refund your points in your uh, spell trees. So let's say uh, you're leveling up your spells and you accidentally decide to choose the wrong ultimate for that spell tree. No worries, you just build the Altar of Recollection and you can reset that tree. So yeah, it's really cool. I think it's really clever to reuse an asset that way and it definitely fits the bill. So I, I think that it, it that was actually a pretty like 200 IQ move. <laughs> Castle Heart upgrades. The Castle Heart now visually upgrades with each level. Level 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then, of course, you have a uh, higher increase floor tiles. So with level 1, you go from 50 to 40. Oh, it's increased from 50 uh, to 50 from 40. So it looks like they added 40 tiles to most of these, I think. So yeah, it looks like uh, we have even more tiles to work with. So that's cool. These are just default settings. You can change this in the um, game settings. That's something else I'm going to show in that uh, guide I was mentioning earlier that I'm working on. Spells, weapons, and armor. Spells, weapons, and jewels have been tweaked and tuned. There are two new weapon types, the longbow and the whip. Ancestral weapons and how to obtain them have been changed. Rare blue ancestral weapons drop at a lower rate from V-Bloods and at a higher rate from Incursion Events at level 57 in Ruins of Mordium. Epic purple tier weapons only drop from level 80 plus. Incursion Events in Ruins of Mordium, these were previously legendary items. A new legendary tier of item has been added that also drops in Ruins of Mordium, but with a low drop chance. These are named weapons with unique weapon modifications, but have the same item level as epic weapons. 
Unlocking spells. Viblast no longer unlocks a specific spell, but rather unlocks a spell point for a specific school and tier, allowing for more player choice as you make progress. Passives. Players now unlock passive buffs, boosting the power of your vampire further. There are 18 passives in total, connected to the six different spell schools, and players may unlock all passives, and similar to the research desk, players may collectively unlock these within their clan. Uh, what they should have mentioned here is that that's uh, done through the Stygian altar, by the way. Aim feedback update. All visual indicators for aiming spells have been updated with new visuals along with additional shapes and forms for the gamepad. Uh, I think this has been a really good change. I, I've been messing around with this. Uh, the gamepad one is also very helpful. Um, but yeah, that, that's really nice. Ancestral Forge. Rare weapons may now be upgraded up to level 26 using the Ancestral Forge, making rare items into more meaningful up until players are able to obtain epic tier weapons. Magic Sources Update. Magic Sources have fewer attribute bonuses, but have on-hit effects instead, playing into each spell school starting from tier 6. Armor Sets and Armor Customization. Each sub-tier of armor, tier 4, tier 6, and tier 8 now have four different sets, each with its own stats, set bonuses, and visuals. Players may now also customize their armor set. You may replace the visuals of your equipped armor with any other piece that you have access to, and you can change the color palette of each of them. Dracula's Regalia, a tier 9 endgame armor set, has been added. Uh, something I want to mention real quick, just to kind of give a better idea of like what this actually is. Um, some people would call it a transmog system. Other people would call it a glamour system that usually comes from like either WoW or like FF14, depending on how, you know, uh, whether or not you've played those games usually. But uh, yeah, basically that's all this is. Um, it's a really, really nice quality of life change. And something that I like to do, which I think is kind of like a clever strategy is, so for example, uh, you can use it to hold on to items that you don't want to have eating up your inventory. So one way that I utilize this is I take the Shroud of the Forest, which is like the forest cape for the Cursed Forest, which you get from... Uh, the old wanderer, I, I take that and I put it into that slot and then you can just hide it um, because you can also make things, you can make your gear invisible, which is really, really cool. So you can always use that as a placeholder. And I think it's just been a really good strategy just to keep your inventory clear. So if you ever get a bunch of gear or items or something like that, and you don't want to necessarily um, throw it away, but you're holding on to it for whatever reason, uh, just remember that this is technically an extra gear slot. Uh, so uh, I do use it as extra inventory. Um, so not only is it more practical and convenient and kind of like easily accessible, but it's also uh, a nice visual upgrade and quality of life change in general. I just wanted to mention that because I thought it was pretty you know, good idea. Maybe you guys could use that too. Attribute updates. Cooldown reduction has been reworked into increased cooldown rate for spells, weapons, and ultimates. Cooldown rate increases the rate at which cooldowns are refreshed, i.e. 100% increased cooldown means that your cooldowns refresh 100 refresh 100 faster, equivalent to 50% cooldown reduction. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Some attributes are now capped at certain values. Weapon and spell cooldown rate is capped at 40% and damage reduction is capped at 25%. General attribute scaling adjustments. Reduced the general physical damage scaling on weapons and increased it on spell damage. Late tier weapons now gain less physical power while magic sources more. Since there is a level difference primarily in endgame between weapons and magic sources, this change should close the gap between them and thus generally make spells slightly stronger and physical attacks slightly weaker. Players now receive 15 to 25 percent more maximum health from armor, and PVE units deal 15 to 25 percent more damage to effectively reduce the time to kill in PvP scenarios. The increase in health slash damage is increased more towards end game than early game. Healing the life leech has been boosted on spells and affects that heal based on spell power to ensure that this change does not affect the power of healing spells. Note that healing slash leech has not been buffed in general, which could be the perception when reading the detailed spell changes. Legendary jewels. Legendary jewels with four spell mods may now drop from endgame bosses and rift incursion events. Spider form. Turn into a spider and burrow to avoid the sun or to surprise an enemy. I hate spider form. 
I hate it so much. <laughs> spell and ability changes. General, target spells such as Power Surge and Phantom Aegis can no longer be cast on horses or mounts. Oh, thank God. I don't know why I would want that, but okay. <laughs> Knockback resistance is increased during counters and barriers. Some attacks such as Tendon Swing, Aerial Strike, and certain knockback jewels on spells will no longer interrupt these effects. Subdue target can no longer be used in quick succession to charm two targets at once. The jewel effect that turn- wait, what? Subdue target can no longer be used in quick succession to charm- I didn't even know that was a thing. Wow, that's crazy. The jewel effect that turns condemned targets into mages instead of warriors has been removed. Players are now always invulnerable during iframes for all veils, sword, shockwave, travel duration, and blood right immaterial duration. Um, this is kind of important more for PvP. Uh, there was an exploit where you could use like your axes while someone is like midair, like halfway through and still hit them before they can even react. Um, this was actually banned in like competitions and stuff like that so i'm glad that they uh it seems that they've dealt with this issue so that's nice you can now abort the channeling state when trying to revive an ally oh yeah i've noticed that and that has saved me <laughs> blood men healing increased to five percent from four percent and now drains 0 0.1 blood per tick reduced from 0 0.2 Jewels. Many jewel effects have been tweaked, replaced, added, or removed for balance purposes or for spells that have been reworked. Generally, many consumed spell school debuff jewels have been reworked to instead apply the bonus effect without consuming the debuff. Bales. Space. Uh, when they say space, they, they mean like your, um, your dashes. All veils now grant 5% maximum healing on the following M1 on top of Spell School unique effects. This change should make all veils more viable as the Life Leash component from Veil of Blood was unmatched in most scenarios. Ultimates. The cooldown of all ultimates has been reduced to 120 seconds from 150 seconds. Oh my god, we're not even halfway through the patch. I just looked at the <laughs> screen, holy crap. Blood School. School specific effect leech. Leech the life force from your enemies for five seconds. Physical attacks restore 10% of damage dealt against leeched enemies. Heal yourself for 3% of your maximum health and the target of, uh, affected by leech perishes. Okay. Shadow bolt projectile damage reduced to 170% from 180. Blood right cooldown increased from 10 sec uh, to 10 seconds from 9. Blood rage healing increased to 60% from 40. Uh, movement speed reduced to 15% from 25. Sanguine Coil. Changes to how leech healing and some spell jewels were calculated. These changes drastically reduce self-healing with some combinations of jewel mods. Okay, that's fair. Veil of Blood. Now triggers a Nova of Blood, dealing 20% damage and draining 20% health. Crimson Beam, damage over time increased to 250% from 200, ally healing increased to 200% from 150, self healing increased to 75% from 25%. Chaos School, school specific effect, Ignite, Ignite your enemies with Chaos Flames, dealing 50% magic damage over 5 seconds, triggers an explosion that deals 50% magic damage when a target affected by Ignite perishes. Aftershock, Speed increased slightly by reducing cast time, projectile speed, and time before impact slightly. Cooldown reduced to 9 seconds from 10 seconds. Chaos Barrier got reworked. Block melee and projectile attacks in front of you for 2 seconds. Blocking an attack charges the barrier up to 5 times. Unleash a Chaos Bolt, dealing 50% magic damage and inflicting Ignite when the effect ends. The projectile deals 40% additional damage per charge. Recast during the effect to launch the projectile early. Cooldown increased to 11 seconds from 10 seconds. Power Surge. Movement speed bonus reduced to 20% from 25. Attack speed bonus reduced to 20% from 25. Duration reduced from, uh, to 3.5 seconds from 4 seconds. Veil of Chaos. Triggering the recast increases the cooldown by 1 second. Chaos Barrage. May now move while channeling the attack. Damage Per direct hit increases to 200% from 150%. Area damage increased to 100% from 75%. Unholy School. Bone Explosion. Cooldown reduced to 9 seconds from 10 seconds. Word of the Damned. Cooldown increased from 11 seconds to 10 seconds. Death Knight. Rework. 
Summon a Death Knight at a target location that attacks nearby enemies. Each swing deals 50% magic damage in an area and inflicts Condemn. The Death Knight lasts for 6 seconds. Veil of Bones. No longer deals bonus damage nor bonus damage on targets with low health. Now summons a Skeleton Warrior on successful hit. Soul Burn. Cast time increased to 0.5 seconds from 0.2 seconds. Volatile Arachnid. Rework. Summon a giant spider that chases down your enemy and explodes when nearby, dealing 250% magic damage, inflicting Condemn, and spawning three spiderlings. Each spiderling explodes, dealing 125% magic damage and inflicting Condemn. Army of the Dead. New. New ultimate spell replacing Summon Fallen Angel. Summon Fallen Angel has been moved to a Soul Shard item. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Okay. Inflict Condemn on nearby enemies and summon an army of five skeleton warriors and three skeleton mages around you. Skeletons last up to eight seconds. Illusion School. Phantom Aegis. Cooldown increased to 11 seconds from 10 seconds. The shield lasts for two seconds instead of three seconds. Mistrance. Cooldown increased to 10 seconds from nine seconds. Wraith Spear. Now dashes in input direction instead of inverted cursor direction. Oh, that's nice. Mosquito Rework. The Mosquito can no longer move, but gains 320% of spell power as health instead of 125%. Taunts nearby PvE enemies and deals 100% spell damage when exploding increased from 70%. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. Um, I could see this maybe working with like uh, Void, maybe I don't know, because uh, Void brings enemies to like the center. So I wonder how that's gonna work if we put those two together. It's interesting. Spectral Guardian, Guardian melee strikes damage increased to one hundred percent from eighty percent. Nice. Wisp Dance, Wisp now leech thirty percent of damage dealt. Frost School. Freeze. Freezes your enemy solid, making them unable to move or act. Deals 25% magic damage, inflicts chill, and staggers the target for 1 second. If the target is immune to freeze, vampires are frozen for half the duration. Ice Nova. The initial blast now freezes enemies affected by chill. Cooldown reduced to 9 seconds from 10 seconds. Frost Barrier. Cooldown increased to 11 seconds from 10 seconds. Cold Snap. New. New counter spell that replaces Ice Block. Block melee and projectile attacks for 1.5 seconds. Blocking and attack triggers in Ice Nova that deals 50% magic damage and inflicts a 3 second freeze. Gain a shield absorbing up to 100% of your spell power for 6 seconds when the effect triggers. Veil of Frost. No longer triggers a Frost Nova effect, dealing 50% area damage. Now grants a shield absorbing 100% of your spell power on a successful hit. Ice Block, reworked into Ultimate. Combined with Frost Vortex and reworked into an Ultimate ability, turn target ally or self into solid ice for up to 5 seconds and summon a Frost Vortex. The Ice Block shields the target for 450% of your spell power, grants immunity to crowd control effects, and heals up to 10% of the target's maximum health. The Vortex initially deals 100% magic damage and inflicts chill. The Vortex deals 240% additional damage over the duration of the effect. Storm School. School-specific effect. Static. Electrify your enemy for 5 seconds, causing physical damage dealt to them to trigger a shock, dealing 10% magic damage. Triggers a chain lightning effect traveling towards the nearest enemy dealing 50% magic damage, inflicting static and bouncing up to two times when a target affected by static perishes. Static stun. Stun caused by static now has diminishing returns. Discharge. Rework. Block melee and projectile attacks for up to 1.5 seconds. Blocking an attack pulls the target toward you and grants one storm shield. Enemies triggering discharge in close vicinity are stunned for 0.8 seconds. Storm shields circle around you, dealing 20% magic damage and inflicting static. Effect stacks up to three times. Cyclone. Range has been heavily reduced to make Cyclone play more into melee builds. Technically acts as an AoE type of spell, ignoring counters and barriers. Ball lightning. Ball lightning. Cooldown reduced to 9 seconds from 10 seconds. Lightning curtain. Cooldown increased to 11 seconds from 10 seconds. Movement speed bonus reduced to 30% from 40%. Veil of Storm. No longer inflict static by dashing through an enemy. Raging Tempest. Fix the bug causing the spell to waste some of its attacks against immaterial targets. Lightning Typhoon. New. 
New ultimate replacing Eye of the Storm. Eye of the Storm has been moved to a Soul Shard. Spin around, gaining 70% fading haste and shocking nearby enemies, dealing 720% spell damage and inflicting static over 3.5 seconds. Occasionally release sparks of lightning, dealing 40% spell damage and inflicting static. I've actually tried a uh, lightning typhoon and it's so much fun. <laughs> I just gotta say, I really like this uh, particular spell. I think it's interesting they moved Eye of the Storm to a soul shard. So that's something I guess I'm gonna have to look into and try out myself. Crossbow. Crossbow has been slightly reworked to reward a more active play style where you can combo attacks to gain temporary attack speed buffs. Nice. Primary attack. Damage reduced to 100% from 115%. Consumes marked, dealing 25% bonus damage and increasing attack speed by 7% for 10 seconds. This effect stacks up to three times. Reign of Bolts. Each hit now inflicts marked. Snapshot. Slow duration reduced to 1.5 seconds from 2 seconds. Now splits into two additional bolts upon hit. Each bolt inflicts marked. Slashers. Camouflage duration reduced to 2.5 seconds from 3 seconds. Elusive Strike cooldown increased to 10 seconds from 8 seconds. Axes. Fix an issue where the attack speed buff of Frenzy scaled too much when combined with other attack speed buffs, resulting in higher attack speed than intended. Reaper. Tendon Swing Snare Duration increased to 2.5 seconds from 2 seconds. Great Sword. Death from Above cooldown increased to 10 seconds from 8 seconds. Pistols. Explosive Bullet cooldown increased to 10 seconds from 8 seconds. Longbow. New Weapon. Primary Attack. Hold to charge a projectile that deals 60 to 120% physical damage on hit and grants focus. Focus stacks up to three times and increases the effectiveness of your other longbow skills. Fully charged shots pierce up to two enemies. Subsequent hits deal 50% damage of the previous hit. Multi-shot. Fire five piercing arrows in a cone dealing 100% physical damage and knocking enemies back. Consumes focus, launching one additional arrow per stack each stack dealing 20% bonus damage. Guided Arrow. Fire an arrow dealing 120% physical damage and inflicting a two second fading snare. The arrow turns to hit the same target again after impact, dealing 50% damage. Consumes focus, increasing the number of times the arrow turns to hit by one per stack. Uh, I just gotta say really quick, so the longbow is probably, I actually really, really like the, the longbow. Um, I also like the whip as well. We're going to go after, uh, over this, but I feel like the longbow is just a little bit more fun to use. Um, but yeah, th this is, this is definitely very interesting, but yeah, I'm just wondering, how do you guys feel about, uh, the longbow versus the whip? Uh, I know I put out a poll in the YouTube community tab not too long ago, so, uh, I'm going to link it in the description. So maybe you guys can, uh, vote, uh, so far, I won't tell you the results of it, um, until, well, I'm not going to reveal any results, but I just thought that the result was interesting so far. Whip, new weapon. Primary attack, perform a combo of melee attacks dealing 50, 50, 55% physical damage to the first enemy hit. Deals 20% additional physical damage in a small radius at the tip of the whip. Oh, that's interesting. Aerial whip twirl. Leap towards the cursor and swing your whip around dealing 100% physical damage, knocking enemies back, and inflicting a 1.5 seconds fading snare. Entangling Whip. Strike in a line, dealing 100% physical damage and inflicting a 2.5 second entangle. Units. General. Horses now have 20% increased maximum health. Taking damage while trying to mount a horse will now interrupt the ability. Dominated horses now visually disappear instead of turning into ghost horses when they die. Ranged units are now less likely to run toward players that stand behind small obstacles. Huh, okay. I think I have actually noticed that happen with like a boss or two. Now I think about it. Player minions are now properly excluded from all boss mechanics that are intended to scale with the number of players. Okay, so this change here is huge. This will open up so many possibilities as to how people can kill uh, different bosses. Uh, one of the best examples of this uh, being an issue before that I could think of uh, would be actually uh, Gore Crusher, the behemoth. Because it used to be that you would put out, um, like you would avoid uh, putting out any kind of minions during the ad phase because then it would spawn like 
extra ads which was insane um so not having this uh be a thing anymore is definitely gonna open up strategies for players and i i definitely look forward to that fix an issue where bosses could disengage players that jump over terrain with travel abilities i think they're talking about either wolf form jump or horse jump here i think that's what they mean but i'm not entirely sure fix an issue with applying a knockback on a boss while it was casting an ability that would sometimes cause it to teleport a short distance after the knockback generally improved ai behaviors and fixed issues where units could get stuck in certain states where they were unable to use their abilities unit updates holy priest Holy Beacon summons now have a max lifetime of 30 seconds. Withered Vampires got a glow up with a new model, animations, and some new attacks and behaviors. Fee Blood updates. Alpha Wolf. Alpha Wolf changed to Alpha the White Wolf. Uh, really quick, guys, I just want to say I made a couple of videos showing before and after um, the 1.0 changes. And the newest one I posted at the time I'm recording this was the one that shows the V blood artwork. So if you'd like to see the before and after changes for description, uh, artwork, visuals, and interface, you can definitely check that out. I'm going to leave that in the description below. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. Keely, the frost archer arrows now deal reduced damage when several arrows hit the same target. Keely has received a new model and portrait in the V blood menu. Errol, the Stonebreaker. Errol has received a new model and portrait in the V Blood menu. Lydia, the Chaos Archer. Lydia has received a model and V Blood portrait update. Rufus the Foreman now has a stable return range position at the center of his arena. Was previously dependent on where he was engaged as he walked around. Grace and the Armorer. Polished to the timing of effects on attacks. Added ground impact effect on his basic attack. Fixed issue with sliding after attacking. Gorswine the Ravager. Fix issue with sliding after casting a projectile. I have not seen that either. Clive the Firestarter has received a new model and V-Blood portrait. I really think that Clive's uh, changes are just a huge glow up, honestly, because like uh, if you look at the before and after, it's like I feel like the after is just so much better because it, it they gave him a pipe. And you're probably wondering, like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, how else is he, is he gonna light the bombs you know it makes sense that he has a pipe so to me it was like it was like a 200 iq move there okay maybe it wasn't that smart but i'm impressed i like the change okay that's all i gotta say craig the undead general reduced health and damage of his minions spawned by his ward of the damned codia the ferocious bear ferocious bear changed to codia the ferocious bear fixed issue with sliding after attacking reduced turn speed i have not seen that either quincy the bandit king players can no longer actually uh now i think about it having that reduced turn speed i i think i did notice when i killed them that it was easier to dodge their attacks like i did a lot less dashing in that fight than i used to so that's interesting quincy the bandit king players can no longer counter or block his charge ability is now smarter when he uses his parry to better counter players. Increase cooldown and reduce damage of his parry. Leandra the Shadow Priestess. Shadow Soldiers now have a smoother dash attack sequence. Shadow Soldiers have slightly increased time to attack. Maja the Dark Savant. Maja now only spawns a minion from her ranged attack if it successfully hits an enemy player. Fix the bug where she would consume a killed inkling. Okay, this bug I've actually experienced. I'm glad they fixed that. Meredith, the Bright Archer, reduced her minion's health scaling per player. Really? Huh, that, means, that actually explains a lot. Wow. Meredith has received a texture update and improvements to her V-Blood portrait. Frostmaw, the Mountain Terror, fixed an issue with freeze duration HUD, not resetting correctly when multiple freezes were applied. I've noticed that. Okay. Octavian the Militia Captain fixed issue with leap attack effects that did not play correctly when the ability was countered. Interesting. Domina the Blade Dancer fixed issue with leap attack effects that did not play correctly when the ability was countered. Angrum the Purifier fixed an issue where he could go swap aggro to random enemies. Okay, yeah, I've seen this. This is actually hilarious. <laughs> um, I'd have to check and see if this is actually fixed. Um, I'm not sure if it is well it says it's fixed but i could have sworn i've seen him do it again recently but i'm not entirely 
certain. I'd have to, I'd have to double check that or maybe try it again just to see and make sure. Angora the Spider Queen fixed an issue where her webs would stop being rendered before the web actually despawned, causing unfortunate vampires to get stuck in invisible webs. Yeah, that happened to me. I don't like Angora. Albert the Duke of Balaton. The Duke of Balaton changed to Albert the Duke of Balaton. Tweak swallow ability to be slightly easier to avoid. Increased cast time of his leap that creates poison areas. Increased cooldown of summoning adds abilities. Reduced turn speed. Good. Yeah, uh, the Duke was a bit annoying before. I, I like these changes. Ben the Old Wanderer. The Old Wanderer changed to Ben the Old Wanderer. Henry Blackbrew the Doctor tweaked effects and hitboxes of his beams to more accurately match one another. Matka the Curse Weaver. Vampires can no longer feed while transformed into pigs. What? I didn't even know that was a thing. Wow, that's it. that. Wow. I had no idea. That's kind of interesting. Terra Claw the Ogre no longer tries to pick up icicles that are about to despawn due to low lifetime. Lord Styx the Night Champion. Night Marshal Styx the Sunderer changed to Lord Styx the Night Champion. Styx has found his way through the mist of the Cursed Forest and now has made his camp at Dracula's Demise. Made an overhaul on Styx's abilities. Now has a quick teleport move to close the gap. Added a jump attack for some more vampire flare. Now summons gargoyles instead of withered vampires. Added another projectile to the bat swarm spell. Tweaked the timing and pattern of his spin attack. Styx now has a new voice and additional voice lines. Oh, and he has gotten help from his flying and fire spewing pet. Talzer, the winged horror. Oh, the thing that kind of confuses me is says he has gotten help from his flying and fire spewing pet. I thought that was Dracula's pet, not his. Because I think he's talking about the yeah, he's talking about the um the winged horror. So I don't I don't really know. That's interesting. Talzer the winged horror. The winged horror changed to Talzer the winged horror. Remove the split on the ice projectiles. OK, that's interesting. Fix several hitbox issues, meaning that Talzer now is much better at hitting vampires with its swipes. The Winged Horror now spawns eight Frost Vortexes instead of just one. Eight? Eight? Wow, that's crazy. Drastically improved performance on his fight, meaning that it does not cause stutters anymore. Cool. Solaris the Immaculate. Reduced return range of Divine Angel to keep it inside the combat arena. Good. Nibbles the Putrid Rat. Putrid Rat changed to Nibbles the Putrid Rat. Fix an issue causing him to reset the fight unintentionally. Yeah, that's actually, that's happened to me. That's kind of funny. V-Blood descriptions have been changed on the following V-Blood units. Alpha the White Wolf, Beatrice the Tailor, Christina the Sun Priestess, Leandra the Shadow Priestess, Meredith the Bright Archer, Jade the Vampire Hunter, Lord Styx the Night Champion, Gore Crusher the Behemoth, Solaris the Immaculate, Telzer the Winged Horror. New V-Blood units. Six new V-Blood units have been added to the game. Finn the Fisherman, General Elena the Hollow, General Cassius the Betrayer, General Valencia the Depraved, Simon Belmont the Vampire Hunter, Dracula the Immortal King. New units, Bandit Scout, Bandit Rascal, Giant Crow. Okay, so this is, an, uh, far, this is just for uh, Farbane Woods. The Giant Crows were a nice addition, so I've noticed them basically in the graveyards. One of the problems that people would have is that sometimes people would run out of blood in the graveyards because obviously there's no like living creatures to suck the blood from. Um, so the giant crows kind of fit that role, but man, are they, they're a force to be reckoned with, honestly. <laughs> Ruins of Mortium, Vampire Cultist, Hand of Dracula, Sanguary Guard, Extinguinator, Giant Bat, Blood Prophet, Dreadhorn, Gargoyle, Night Maiden slash Dark Temptress, Shadowkin, Slaughter Beast slash Ripper Beast, Withered Vampires, Giant Crow. Blood. 100% blood now grants a 25% bonus reduced from 30%. Damn, that's a huge nerf, actually. Dying now causes you to lose 10% of your blood pool and not your entire blood pool. Okay, this is a nice change. Reviving an ally no longer consumes blood. You and your ally keep your existing blood. The blood tracking effect has been improved and is now visible even when in combat, while in wolf form or while mounted. I think this change here, this blood tracking effect change, I think this probably has to do with Ben. 
the old wanderer because um when you go to fight him for the first time you can't exactly see anything so you have to kind of follow the blood trail to kind of find him um and i have noticed that when i went to go kill him it was a little bit easier to track him down now so i think that's why that change was made but that's just a hunch i really don't know blood types new blood type draculin has the following effects 10 to 20 percent increased movement speed during the night 10 to 20 percent increased damage against enemies below 30 percent health 40 to 80 percent increased healing from blood men one additional bite charge and restores five percent of your maximum health when killing an enemy using bite Boosts all the above effects by 25%. I really like this blood type. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh, if you just want to be a vampire and you want to be a buff vampire, this is the, this is the blood type for you. <laughs> Creature blood. Damage reduction reduced to 8 to 16% from 10 to 20%. Warrior blood. Physical power bonus reduced to 10 to 15% from 10 to 20%. Damage reduction reduced to 6 to 12% from 7.5 to 15%. Harry chance reduced to 10% from 15%. Group blood. Leech increased to 6% to 12% from 5% to 10%. Attack speed increased from 8% to 16% from 7.5 to 15%. 90% blood healing proc buff now increases all physical damage, not only damage from primary attacks. This buff seems a little bit strong to me. Just on the surface. I'd have to test that out more. Rogue blood. Explosive shot on pistols no longer triggers the rogue blood crit buff interesting ui ux updates the entire user interface has gotten a facelift with additional quality of life additions along with a tailored interface for the gamepad for select parts of the game such as the hud and the build menu and then it just shows a couple of pictures here uh as far as like uh so it shows a comparison so this is secrets of gloomrot and then if you go down the page it shows uh the 1.0 update uh they're very they're very similar the biggest change notably is that uh, the number of things on your hotbar has been reduced from 9 to 8. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Just a nicer, cleaner interface. And they also added the um, a spot for your bag, the ability to change your appearance and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, for the most part, the changes are just really nice quality of life and visual updates. So very nice. Spellbook update. Uh, oh, okay. So here it shows a comparison of the before and after for spellbook updates. And it shows you the ones for blood magic in this image. I'm actually going to post another comparison video where it's going to show the difference between every single spell. Um, but that's going to take a little bit of time and probably won't come out until after this video is already released. So I guess keep an eye out for that. Powers wheel update. And it shows uh, what it used to look like. And now we have like double the amount of things on our powers wheel, which is kind of nice. The only thing I don't like about this is how you can't like move your powers around on your on your um, hotbar because I had them kind of set in a very particular way. So not being able to move them around kind of sucks, though I am getting kind of used to it. it. I just wish we had that ability to just move it around. HUD. Updated visuals and improved readability of different HUD elements, character bars, and interaction UI. Main menu, visual updates and improvements to options, browsing online servers, hosting private games, and altering advanced settings. Map. The map has gotten visual updates with improved readability. The closest route to a map marker will be outlined once one is placed. Added a keybind to center the map at yourself. I actually really like that change. Minimap is now available in the starting crypt and graveyard. I've noticed that uh, those two zones used to not have a map at all, so that's cool. Scrolling combat text. Damage values now scale in size depending on how much damage was dealt. Spellbook. Spellbook has been updated with a new visual look that is also more gamepad friendly. Deathlog. You can now see the source of your defeat. Character menu. Character blood pool tab. Added a tab in the character inventory to display your current blood pool. Attribute tab. Added a tab in the character inventory that displays all your stats and attributes. Shapeshift wheel. The action wheel for shapeshifts and emotes has been expanded to 12 slots so that all powers and forms are available at all times. Players may change shapeshift skin in each entry instead of having skins as separate abilities. The wheel is now always centered in the middle of the screen. Uh, yeah, so I've actually tested this out. Um, basically, all you do is you just go to your 
vampire powers menu and you click on like let's say i want to use the stygian wolf form instead of the basic i can click on the wolf form icon and on the right hand side it will show a menu where i can cycle between well right now just because we have three different variations you can you can basically um cycle between variations i think this is a much better system i like that a lot actually crafting stations track recipes Players may now track individual recipes within crafting stations. Okay, so the thing about the, the recipes and the crafting stations is there's two things. One, I don't like that you can't track recipes with making multiples of a certain object in mind. So let's say, for example, I want to make a uh, copper sword, right? But maybe I want to make one for myself and one for my clan member. I can't track the recipe in a way that allows me to get the exact number of materials I need of each in order to make two swords. If there was a way to do that or if they can uh, create a way to make that possible, that'd be great. And I think something else they should do is maybe allow you to track multiple recipes because right now you can only track one. Progression and material changes. General. General changes and updates to some V-Blood levels, gameplay balance, and rewards. Basic materials now have bigger stacks, wood, stone, blood essence, etc. Many decoration unlocks have been moved to be part of V-Blood unlocks instead of research unlocks. Players now gain more basic materials such as stone and wood when harvesting, reducing the amount of early game grind. Many structures and decorations have had their build costs rebalanced. Generally, decorations are cheaper now. Wallpapers no longer have any item cost and can now be placed by holding down the input, making it a lot faster and easier to redecorate your rooms. Um, so the way to do this on mouse and keyboard is by pressing and holding shift while hovering wallpaper on a wall. And then when you click, the whole room on that exact row uh, ends up adopting that wallpaper. The same is true for the outside of the building. So I just wanted to let you guys know. You may now grind Hell's Clarion and Ghost Rooms into Pollen in the Grinder. This right here is probably one of the biggest changes that has made things so much easier for making early game threads. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a great change. Um, something else I would like them to do, not just from the pollen, but I wish that they did the same thing, but with plant fibers. So I wish that you, like, let's say you throw a flower into the grinder. Right now, all you get is pollen. I wish that you got pollen and plant fibers. That I think that would be really, really nice. Consumables. Crafting costs for various consumables have been rebalanced. Most consumable effects have had their duration of the effect increased to 60 minutes. Potions increasing physical and spell power have had the effect reduced to 3 from 4 for early game potions and to 6 from 8 for end game potions. New potion, Vampiric Brew, increases spell leech by 10% and blood type efficiency by 5%. Soul Shards. The four most powerful V-Blood bosses drop soul shards. These have been reworked into magic sources with unique on-hit effects and ultimate abilities. Depending on the server settings, there may only be one of each active at once. Soul shards can only be repaired by participating in world events, or more specifically, rift incursions in Ruins of Mordium. Players will need to venture out into the world and risk it all if they want to keep their soul shards, or they will be destroyed and reset to each shard carrier. Bag rework. Bags have been reworked and are now a single equipable item that increases your entire inventory space. Bags may also have additional stats. This is probably one of the best changes I, that they added to the game because it used to be that you had, you know, a bag for books, a bag for plants, a bag for gem, a bag for money. Um, but now it's just one type of bag with resistances and things like that. So it's definitely a really, really good uh, rework on the bag system. I love that. Journal, quests, and tutorial. There's a number of updates to existing journal quests along with new entries and rewards. All tutorial steps have been updated and additional onboarding tips have been added. General. Lots of bug fixes, anti-exploit fixes, and tuning of content. Vampires are now able to walk through an optional keybind. Yeah, that was something you couldn't do before. Like, you couldn't walk, you could only kind of just run, right? Um... So default is running. Uh, I This optional keybind, I like that they made it optional because there's no real like purpose to that unless you're like maybe role playing or something. Um, it's actually easier to do on controller though, I've noticed because you can just move the 
joystick slightly and your vampire will just walk. Um, so that's actually really interesting that they wrote that here. Extensive work to optimize visual effects throughout the entire game with the goal to provide a more stable FPS and improved gameplay experience across more hardware. Additional units added to Farbane. Low-level bandit scouts, rascals, and wildlife crows. Golems and explosives are placeable on 2.5 heights. I wonder what they mean by that. 2.5 heights. Is it that like when you place it, it's you can do it on a surface that's higher up than you? That's kind of odd. I don't really understand what this change means. I don't really mess with golems either, so I, I really have no idea what this means. If someone who plays PvP and maybe messes around with the golems could tell me, please do in the comments. Added additional tiers of health scaling for golems in advanced settings. Devoted now has scholar blood instead of warrior blood. Ancestral weapons are no longer sold by merchants in glue rot, are now instead sold by vampire merchants in the ruins of Mordium. I so there used to be this treasure hunter in Gloomrot. I don't know if they're still there. They're in northern Gloomrot before. And basically they would you you could basically access them from the transition from Silverlight over to Gloomrot, like through that that uh the bridge to there. I have no idea if that merchant is still there but selling something else or if they just removed them completely. So I might have to revisit the area to find out. Gloomrot and Cursed Forest saplings that are planted in your territory now yield Gloomwood and Cursed Wood, respectively. Yeah, that wasn't a thing before and it was kind of silly. This was actually something that uh, players requested, so uh, it's good to see that in the, in the patch notes here. Many visual effects should now be correctly hidden while the player or enemy target is invisible. For example, during stealth or when teleporting. Horses now feed on plant fiber instead of water bottles. That makes sense. Shard bearers are now part of the V-Blood progression tree panel and are no longer a separate tab. Players can no longer unstuck while wounded. Oh wow, I didn't realize that was a problem. Unstuck while wounded. That's, that's kind of odd. I'm trying to think of like the applications of that or why that, that was even removed, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. We have added a rim light to the unit models to increase readability and enhance the graphical visual impression of the game. This setting can be found in the graphical options menu. We have implemented an image based lightning solution to better render materials and lighting conditions throughout the entire game. This new lighting model affects every area of the game, making the objects in the environment better interact with each other. You may now teleport with your mount when using local castle teleporters. Bottles and potions. Players no longer need to fill bottles with water slash sludge. Drinking a potion will no longer consume the bottle. An empty water skin or glass bottle will be returned to the inventory after consuming the content. This is really nice. Inventory management. Players may now drop their entire inventory into a single container bag, similar to the death bag. Added hotkeys for compulsively count, take all, and sort. The compulsively count action has been split into quick take and quick send, allowing the action to work both directions. There are additional input bindings for these actions. Default Q for quick take and E for quick send using KBM, L3 and R3 using gamepad. Fishing. Canceling fishing too early no longer despawns the pool of fish. Thank God. This is something that, I, that was driving me nuts. Fishing drop tables update. There is now a higher chance of actually getting fish when fishing. Fishing poles can now be crafted from inventory. This is huge. This is huge and this is also huge. Players may now feed prisoners with more types of fish. This is also huge. I, I love these fishing changes. Very nice. Um, I hope that they maybe add more to this fishing system because I actually really enjoy fishing. Really quick, something I want to mention is that you can actually catch piranhas now in the water. I, that actually happened to me. I was fishing and then I got attacked by a piranha. It was great. Um, <laughs> so just beware. Okay, guys. Achievements. Introducing Steam achievements. Conquer bosses, explore the map, reach pivotal progression milestones, and ultimately triumph over Dracula himself. Gear up, level up, and prepare to rise to glory. Are you ready to claim your victory? Hell yeah. Servants. New Servant Hunt's locations, West Fortress Ruins, Dracula's Castle Garden, Cleric's Servant, fixed an issue where they would cast supporting abilities on dead horses. Reduce the duration of servant injuries from completing servant hunts. Visual effects and sound. 
Visual effects. A great amount of visual effects have been updated with new and improved visuals along with performance improvements to make sure it looks great and runs smoothly. Sound. Support for DualSense controller, including both haptics and controller speaker. 7.1 and 5.1 surround support added. New player VO for abilities, emotes, and social. New UI sounds for venues and crafting. Remastered voice acting for some older voices. General mixing, refinement, and optimization and bug squashing. Music. Added new music tracks for Mordium Day and Night. Added new music track for Dracula Boss Fight. Added new music track for Simon Belmont Boss Fight. Voices. Added additional vampire voice lines to a number of actions. Added voice lines for emotes. Remove voice lines out of date with the current narrative of the game. Added voice lines for new V-Blood units. Improved old voice lines and added new ones for sticks. Okay. Server settings. The server settings menu has been updated and settings have been distributed into different categories. Game settings, items, PvP, building, progression. Settings have been streamlined in the in-game interface and some niche settings have been removed from the menu. Note that most options are still available when setting up dedicated servers, but all settings are not available in the in-game interface. Um, by the way, guys, I'm currently working on a server settings guide that will be coming hopefully by next week, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see. Change settings on existing servers slash saves. Using the load game menu, players may now edit the settings of their save slash server, allowing you to customize a game world even after hosting it. The vast majority of settings can be changed and will take effect immediately after restarting the server slash loading the game. This is such a huge quality of life buff, I just want to say. Settings with limited support. Altering teleport bound, bat bound, or blood bound settings will only affect new items created after toggling the setting. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Progression settings such as starting level and starting items will only affect new vampire avatars created after changing these settings. PvP protection will only affect new vampires created after toggling this setting. Updated settings. Added new settings for rift incursions. Incursion interval. Minor incursion duration. Major incursion duration. Real-time hours for when incursions may spawn. Added settings for the relocate feature. Enable slash disable the feature. Modify the cooldown from 0 through 48 hours. How often a castle may be relocated. Uh, I really like these uh, this flexibility when it comes to the relocation feature. I, I love that. Journal progression settings reworked into starting level. You may no longer individually select what journal quests are unlocked. Instead, all quests below the set starting level will be unlocked for all players, including all research on select level. Yeah, so this is something that you used to be able to adjust in the server settings, um, but it looks like they took that away and just kind of streamlined it a little bit. So that's probably what they meant by only, you know, most of the settings being the same, but you know, they took away a few. Uh, took away a few. I think this is what they're referring to here. Other added build limit settings for Stygian, Summoning Circle, and Throne of Darkness. Teleport bound items split into two options: one for Waygates and one for Batform. Siege Golem Health setting now has additional health values between 750 health and 7500 health. Increase the maximum setting for castle floors to 800 tiles. Official server settings updates. PvE servers now allow bat form when carrying items with the cannot be teleported tag. All official servers now only allow one castle heart per vampire. Duo PvP servers have a lower limit for the maximum tombs. PvP servers now show golems on the map. Servers with unique shards enabled will have Mordium events disabled between the hours of 2 and 8 local server time. This is for the sake of motivating players to attend the zone during active hours, as well as prevent shard holders from taking advantage of off hours to recharge their shards. Okay. So that sounds like a PvP balancing thing. Alright, here we go. Uh, get V Rising on Steam, subscribe to the newsletter, blah blah blah, join the V Rising Discord server, TikTok, Facebook, X, Instagram. So what did you guys think of the changes to 1.0? Uh, 
I, I'm just curious, like, is there anything that stood out to you? Is there something that uh, maybe you didn't like that they changed? Maybe something you did like? Uh, what do you think is the best quality of life change? Uh, I'd like to know. So let me know in the comments. Uh, that being said, I know at the beginning of this video, I said it was going to be a three for one deal. Well, it turns out I lied because it's now going to be a four for one deal. And I'm, uh, but at the time of recording, a new hotfix number three came out. So I'm going to include that. Any hotfixes that come out after hotfix three, I'm not going to do a separate video for unless it's like a huge patch or something really noteworthy. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably going to just point out the important bits and then post them on the YouTube community tab and on Twitter. So yeah, keep an eye out for all of that information there. Okay, so let's hop right into it. We're going to go over hotfix number one. And I'm going to ignore the uh, intro here because this already took place on Friday, May 10th. Fix an issue where players were unable to mount horses when using a gamepad. I have experienced that. I'm glad they fixed that. Fix an issue where the incursion events would not run correctly on select PvP servers, causing all events to stop running for an additional 24 hours plus. Fix an issue where cosmetic items could be salvaged into high tier materials than intended. Fix an issue where the client would crash when using the fill wallpaper feature in large castles. Fix an issue when the Castle Heart Blood Essence Drain Modifier server setting would not work correctly when modified. Fix a few issues related to castle relocation that could cause flying roofs to stay in place, as well as blocking the possibility to build new castles on the affected territory. Wow, that's really bizarre. <laughs> Fix an issue where saplings slash trees planted in growing plots in the castle got stuck in an invisible state, blocking them from growing as well as blocking dismantle. Yikes. Fix the rendering issue where terrain did not render correctly if viewed through the walls of a castle that was in the disabled defense estate, PvP. Fix an issue where rule sets in the advanced settings menu did not update the save button correctly, causing rule set changes to not apply unless the player manually altered a setting before exiting the menu. Fix an issue where players were unable to save settings after loading a preset. I've actually experienced that. Fix a rendering issue with rim light effect causing it to not work on all types of units. Fix the rendering issue on clouds while in bat form. Now, the thing about the clouds and bat form thing, uh, I didn't experience that, I don't think, but it would be really nice if we could just have a disable clouds option while in bat form. Um, part of the reason why I say that is because when I am castle decorating and I'm looking around the castle to try and spot mistakes, it's hard to do that when I have clouds in my field of view. So uh, just something to think about. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we're gonna go to hotfix number two. We're going to uh, ignore uh, a lot of uh, the little sentences here, and we're gonna go right into it. This hotfix will feature the following changes. Fix a rare bug where players could get stuck in combat once they leave a fight. That has happened to me. Fix a rare issue where players could get stuck outside of the map with a blue screen on login as their character was not synced properly to their client. I've never seen that, but man, is that scary. <laughs> Fix a potential server crash issue. Fix an issue where players would technically still have a weapon equipped after dragging and dropping it into their upgrade slot for the Ancestral Forge. Fix an issue where the Soul Shard map icon would not update correctly to follow the to follow the player carrying it if the soul shard was equipped directly from a soul shard pedestal fixed a rare issue where not all unlocked progressions were correctly synced to a player upon login fix an issue where the maximum user cap would not work correctly allowing more players to join a server than intended Fix an issue where pillars could be destroyed in wide entrances if the wide entrance did not have support by an additional wall. This meant that a golem could destroy an entrance in one hit if they hit the pillar. <laughs> oh my god. The server setting for displaying siege golems on the map is now toggled as disabled as the default setting. This will retroactively go into effect on official servers, and on those servers, Siege Golems will no longer show on the map when placed. Enemy players now interact with prison cells, but they are not able to kill or subdue prisoners this way. 
This fixes an issue where players shared loot in prison cells to secure it from enemy raids. Players may now insert subdued units into empty cells to allow for prisoner trades. This is probably one of the biggest quality of life changes. Um, people were people were joking in the uh, Reddit saying, "Oh, they allowed, they enabled human trafficking." <laughs> and I just kind of laughed because uh, now we're not just uh, keeping humans in prison cells. Well, you can keep Draculin units in there too now, um, so that's pretty cool. Fixed a few assets that were not fading correctly when the player was standing behind them. Lanterns and Farbing Wood cemeteries now emit light correctly. The illusion spawned when using Veil of Illusion will no longer attack other players in PvE. I've seen that and it's weird. <laughs> the support mail in the main menu has been updated. All right, hotfix number three. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to read it, uh, all this. Greetings, vampires. Here are a few quick fixes to try and help out those vampires who might be at risk of unraveling. This hotfix will feature the following changes. A fix that will repair journal quests that were not progressing the Leaf Crypt quests. Several crash fixes to various uncommon but significant events. If you're having issues with the game, make sure to take a look and blah blah blah, and that's it. So this was a really, really short patch. They only do uh, two little changes. So yeah, Hotfix 2 I'd say is probably the most impactful for most people. Um, being able to uh, allow for prisoner trades, so that's definitely really cool. Um, but yeah, I, uh, all right, now, uh, looks like we're done here. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I know it took a while for me to get the long patch notes done and over with. The hard part for me was just finding time to record to do all of it. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. For those of you who don't know, my name is Shiloh Q. I'm a Shiloh Waits Great League Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, and now on Twitter for this month at least. And I usually stream V Rising, but I also stream other games. If you're interested, uh, check out the community tab. I post my schedule there every Sunday. So make sure to do that if you haven't already. Please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, Sholo out.